David Silva has had successful playing careers at Valencia, Manchester City, and Real Sociedad. But we're taking a different approach in this career mode as the Spanish midfielder takes on the manager role at Las Palmas. Currently top of Spain's second division at the halfway mark of the season, Las Palmas are battling to return to La Liga. Historically a side that competes in Spain's top flight, they have the unique characteristic of being located in the Canary Islands, making for one of the longest away day trips in all of Europe. Along with players like David Silva and current club captain Jonathan Vieira that were born on the island of Gran Canaria, Las Palmas have a fantastic track record of youth academy products, including Pedri who plays a pivotal role for Barcelona and Jeremy Pino who is one of La Liga's rising stars. But that's not to say there aren't currently great talents at the club with Alberto Molero, Sergio Cardona, and Enzo Loedis making up a future core of players with over 80 potential. We still have about 9 million remaining in our transfer budget and I'd like to use those funds to improve upon our youth academy. We were fortunate to find a 5 star 5 star scout straight away so he'll be setting up a network in Spain for the rest of the season. Adding to the already existing talent of youth academy players, Vincent Kruger is the best of the bunch. The 59 rated German striker has 82 to 94 potential. We will be moving him to the right winger spot. And with that position change, as well as a bit of growth over the first half of the season, he's now up to a 70 overall. It looks like we've got something special here at Las Palmas as we've made it all the way to the Copa de España final. An impressive feat for a second division side. Unfortunately, we do lose this match, and it was one of our former Youth Academy players, Jeremy Pino, who scored one of the four goals against us. But that didn't affect our performance in the league. We still finished first in La Liga Smart Bank. Reaching that Centurion mark with 31 wins, 7 draws, and 4 losses. So it's a trophy celebration for Jonathan Vieira, who has just returned back to his boyhood club in recent years. As for the other promoted sides with us and Ivar, it's Tenerife who win the promotion playoff final. They are the neighboring club just one island over from us. Leganes, Villarreal B, and Ibiza, the teams at the bottom part of the table. For La Liga Santander, it's Barca to win the title, well clear of Real Madrid, Atleti, and Copa de España winners Villarreal. Mallorca, Girona, and Elche seeing the drop to Spain's second division. It's Napoli that end up winning the Champions League final against Inter. PSG getting the win against Fenerbahce in the Europa League and West Ham actually defeating Villarreal in the Conference League final. Jonathan Vieira well and truly leading by example as club captain. 34 goals across 49 appearances as a center attacking midfielder is ridiculous and did make him the top goal scorer in the league. He also had the most assists for the club with 16, which was two more than his teammate Malero for the top assist spot in La Liga Smart Bank. Kruger by far had the most development this season, going up plus 15 in his overall, instantly becoming a first team player. But we did manage to find a good prospect from Spain as well. Fernando Gutierrez is a 64 rated center back with 84 to 94 potential. Despite all our accomplishments, our manager rating actually went down this season, but the important thing is we have seen promotion to La Liga. It'll be an important season ahead as we try to establish Las Palmas as a consistent top division side in Spain. But if you're enjoying the content, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Board objectives will continue trying to have us develop our youth academy and finish mid-table in La Liga as well as reach round of 16 at the Copa de España. Promotion means we've seen a rise to our transfer budget just shy of 30 million and we'll kick off the signings in season two with a striker that'll provide an aerial presence inside the box. Umar Sadiq's first season at Real Sociedad Dodd was cut short due to injury, most likely brought in as a replacement to Alexander Isak's move to Newcastle United. I thought it would be fitting to sign a player from David Silva's most recent club, and it's a statement signing as we bring in a number 9 for 20 million. It wasn't that much more than his evaluation of 18.5 million, and I think he can contribute the goals. Jose Perez has spent the last decade in the Premier League at Newcastle and Leicester. Just recently set out on loan to Real Betis, he's had a good start in La Liga. But the reason behind this transfer is that he was born in the Canary Islands. Granted, he featured for Tenerife's Youth Academy, who's a rival club to us, but I still think this is a fantastic signing to give us some competition down the right-hand side. It will be a bargain of a deal, just 7 million to complete this signing. Less than his evaluation of 7.5 million. And closing things out with a free agent addition, Raul Albiol has been a consistent defender for so many different teams. He's actually one of the few players to log consistent minutes with David Silva during their time at Valencia and also the Spanish national team. As we see a couple of departures, Coco had his release clause met as he joins up with Hetafe, but our season sees it start with a Derby Day fixture against Tenerife. Here's going to be the new look starting 11. I think it's going to be a battle for us to avoid relegation, but we start the season off with a victory. Sadiq, despite missing a penalty, still gets on the goal sheet, and we'll see how results are going in January 2024. Better than expected, because if the season ended today, 
we would see European football. And I think a lot of that has to do with our veteran leadership from players like Albiol, as well as younger players like Malero and Kruger growing in their rating. January, we'll see a few departures as Cardona joins Crystal Palace in the Premier League for 4 million. Clemente joining Hank on a 2.5 million deal. Higinho joining Besiktas on a 2 million transfer. And finally, Kaptom heading to MLS as he departs for Atlanta United for 1 million. And these won't take effect until next season, but Andone joins up with Norwich at the start of season three, along with Lemos, who departs for Club Bruges at the start of next year. These moves out of the club all made way for the arrival of a new center defensive mid, Anibal Moreno, and with Argentina being by and far the most common foreign nationality at the club, I thought it would be fitting to sign a midfielder that could be a staple in this team, of course, Argentina, one of the best nationalities for high potential players in career mode. We've seen it for talents like Enzo Fernandez, but Moreno will take on the number eight for us as he signs for a 12 million fee, actually less than his valuation of 14 million. So but surely we're looking more like a side that can compete in La Liga, maybe even hold our place in the standings and qualify for European competitions next year. And we have done just that, even going up slightly higher in the standings to fifth. Not many points separating us and some of the teams that finished more towards mid-table, but it was Atleti to win the league with 87 points. Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Sevilla round out the top four spots. Relegation going to Osasuna, Ibar, and our rivals, Tenerife. Deportivo, Alves, Girona, and Mallorca all seeing promotion to Spain's top flights, with Real Madrid winning the Supercopa against Barcelona in the final on penalties. The Copa de España actually going to Barcelona as they get the win against Villarreal, who won it last year. Milan defeat Manchester City in the Champions League final. Lyon get the win against Leipzig in the Europa League. And Real Sociedad adding a European trophy with the Conference League title against Aston Villa. What a first season it was for Sadiq. 21 goals from 40 appearances. That was just shy of having the most goals in the league. Jao Felix was the only player to score more. And Molero has seen some incredible growth in his overall, as well as some great assist numbers. Eight from 40. Gutierrez yet to see the most development as of late, but his loan spell saw him go up plus four in his rating. And Kruger going steady, now holding down the right wing spot with a plus eight in his overall, up to 82. Unfortunate to fall just short on a couple of these board objectives, but our manager rating still in the green at 71. We progressed to European football quicker than expected, but we can expect some changes ahead to the squad in the next season. Not as much focus on our youth academy from the board this year, but we still need to qualify for a European competition and also reach the group stage of the Europa League. I think the biggest change will come in the form of our transfer budget. We already have over 50 million to work with, but I can't personally justify keeping Molero at the squad as a 90 overall player. I was open to accepting the first realistic offer that came through, and it was from Real Madrid, 140 million plus Fevre as part of the deal. We ended up just deciding on a set transfer fee of 175 million. Then Manchester City came through. David Silva and Pep ended up agreeing on a 198.8 million deal. So it was a race between Madrid and Manchester City. Madrid were the first to finalize the contract. Now that we don't need to worry as much about funds moving forward, we can look to further balance out the squad. And I think improving our defense is a big objective. Eric Garcia actually spending a couple of seasons with David Silva at Manchester City. He now, of course, has transferred over to Barcelona, not getting as many minutes as I think he might have expected upon the initial transfer. So I think moving to a another Spanish side that's competing in La Liga and, of course, European competitions is fairly realistic. 20 million was the finalized fee, and with his contract expiring at season's end, that means we could pick him up for less than his valuation. Yes, for Carlson will be our next shortlisted player. The Swede definitely has some interest from the top five leagues. I thought he might have moved in January to the Premier League, but La Liga also has a pretty rich history of Swedish players. You've got the likes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic and more recently Alexander Isak. And with Malero's departure, I wanted to sign a quality player that can also grow in his rating for future seasons. It was a 40 million move quite pricey, but I think he is going to be worth it in the long run as he still has a couple of years left till his prime. Next up is the goalkeeper spots and Augustine Rossi is another Argentine talent that has stayed in the league 
think he's outgrown Boca Juniors at this point. Just about in the prime of his goalkeeping career, we're going to offer him European competitions and a new challenge here in Spain. Ultimately agreeing to pay his release clause of 33.2 million. Not a bad fee as usually those release clauses are a lot more than the player's evaluation. And moving forward, I want to give ourselves another option at the striker's spot. Pretty much just looking for promising real face scan Spanish talents, and Ico Bravo is my personal favorite for FIFA 23. He's actually made the move to Liverpool in this save, kind of following the career of Fernando Torres to an extent, going from Spain to England, but it was a 5 million deal, not a bad fee at all, and he's going to give us a good option off the bench in case Sadiq suffers an injury. Zayfau is actually someone I'm familiar with from a couple of FIFAs back with a Hertzer Berlin career mode. I don't think his potential is as good these days, but at a 75 overall, 26 years old, he's going to give us a solid option to start off with. And we'll keep up with the Youth Academy scouting in Spain, this time for nine months searching for any type of player, but a difficult month of August, our opening two fixtures against Real Madrid and Barcelona. Here's the new team, a lot of changes to our starting 11. And it's going to take some time to build chemistry as we lose our opening fixture to Madrid 2-0. But of course, the Europa League will be a big focus for us as well, as we have Braga, Besiktas, and Derry City in the group stage. Abel Ruiz, the former La Masaya Youth Academy player, has found a good amount of success in Portugal as he's up to a 79 overall there. Getson Fernandez, actually an even higher rating at an 82 overall over at Besiktas. And then the team with the least odds in our group, Derry City, have Ronan Boyce, a 65 rated Irish right back. But we'll see how results are going here in January 2025. Not as good as last season for the La Liga standings, but still 8th place and not too many points separating us in European football. But a good outing in our Europa League group, yet to lose a match there as we finish top with 12 points. And as expected, we have seen some growth across the board to our first team. I do still have some concerns about Zay Fowl. I initially planned on him being our starting right back, but at a 76 overall, he is falling behind the rest of the bunch. So because we still have a good amount of transfer budget remaining, I figured we'd sign Pablo Maffeo, who's another good real face scan option for Spanish fullbacks. He's actually been in the news as of late as Mallorca picked up a big victory against Real Madrid in La Liga, but a good price tag of 25 million. I don't know what was going on with his contract because his evaluation is 9 million more than what we brought him in for. But we'll turn our attention towards the knockout stages of the Europa League. We'll begin in the round of 16 against Rangers. A fun transfer for them as they brought in Todd Cantwell, now at a 76 overall. And I think we were always going to be the favorites in this one. 2-0 in the first leg, 1-1 in the second leg. Puts us 4-3-1 on aggregate against West Ham in the quarterfinals. Obviously a team that's struggling in the Premier League for the current season, but they have brought in some good talents in this save, like Leroy Sané moving back to the Premier League. And it was a 2-2 draw. Carlson with a late goal to give us the equalizer, but unfortunately in the second leg, Carlson didn't quite do enough to pull us completely level as West Ham advanced 6-5 on aggregate. Fortunately, the second half of our La Liga season went even better as we climbed up to 6. That'll be enough to give us Europa League football again next year. It's Real Madrid that end up winning the league a single point ahead of Sevilla. Barcelona and Atleti rounding out the top four with Cadiz, Rayo Vallecano, and Deportivo Alaves seeing the drop to La Liga Smart Bank. Also, Suno Granada and Elche will be seeing promotion next season with Real Madrid winning the Copa de España against Celta Vigo in the final. Bayern get the win against Chelsea in the Champions League final. Juve actually defeat West Ham, the team that got the win against us in the Europa League. And Spurs dropping down to Conference League football, but they get the win against Eintracht Frankfurt in the final. Sadiq's goal scoring just continues to do better and better. 35 goals from 49 appearances this time, and he was the top La Liga scorer couple of goals ahead of Anaki Williams at Athletic Club Bilbao. Kruger, of course, has been growing nicely in his rating, but now he's got the assist numbers to go along with that. And Gutierrez, steady with plus three or plus four growth just about every year. But we'll be adding a couple of more Spanish Youth Academy players into the mix. Fran Jimenez, a 70 rated left winger, 91 to 94 potential. Felipe Garcia, 69 rated goalkeeper, 18 years old, 89 to 94 potential. And Fran Pardo, a 68 rated center attacking mid, just 16 years old and potential of 89 to 94. We've had tough luck with our manager rating, but we continue to stay steady in our league accomplishments. We'll try to do it again next year. In theory, this four season should go even better. Our squad has improved and we're in the same competitions as last year. 
For board objectives, we're again turning focus towards our youth academy, looking to finish in a Champions League spot in La Liga, reach around 16 of the Copa de España, and reach the semifinal of the Europa League. Just shy of 100 million for our transfer budget. And once again, I decided to go super realistic for this career mode. In other cases, I would keep Kruger in this team, but when a big offer is coming in from Spurs, I thought it was enough to accept it, even if we don't necessarily need the funds. Ultimately agreeing on 150 million million transfer to Tottenham Hotspur. So we'll immediately start looking for replacements, beginning with the right-hand side. Happy to see that David Neres finally has a face scan in career mode. The former Ajax and now Benfica man is playing at a high level, and I think is certainly good enough to be in Europa League, if not Champions League football. It's a 37.5 million transfer, just a small drop in the bucket of our transfer balance, but it was pretty close to his current evaluation. And it's about time that we sign the regen of David Silva. If you don't know, when you retire a player to have them become man, Manager, their regen instantly becomes available. Alejandro Navas might not be the exact replica of David Silva. He is right-footed after all, but he is still a quality player and one that I hope to become a staple in our midfield trio. Ended up being a 60 million bid accepted from Mallorca, who we are doing a lot of business with in this save. It was about 5.5 million more than his current evaluation. And to check off the final team that we haven't yet signed a player from of David Silva's former clubs, we'll look to bring in Hugo Guillemon. I remember doing a Valencia crew mode, and if I recall correctly, he was a center back at that time. It looks like he's moved a little bit further forward to now a center defensive mid role. That tells me he's a versatile player, and we can have him play in this team wherever we would like. It was a pretty close move to his evaluation as he signed for $25 million and we'll start doing that center back position change as it's going to take 54 weeks to complete. But our fixtures continue to be difficult in the month of August. Barcelona, Bilbao, and Real Madrid to kick off this season, but our squad is slightly improved compared to last year, especially in our midfield as Loadice takes over the captain's armband from Jonathan Vieira. But a good start to the season as we pick up a draw against Barcelona, and as we take a look at our Europa League group, we've got Hank, Braga and Apoel. El Hodge has recently made the transfer to Hank from Anderlecht. New feature player for Braga, the Argentine talent Uzi, up to a 78 overall. And y'all might know Federico Macheta from his Manchester United days. He's at a 69 rating at 34 years old. Halfway through the season, we'll see how results are going, and we have seen an uptick in our league, standing up to third and only eight points off of Barcelona for the top spot. Finishing second in our Europa League group. Hank doing quite well, only losing the single match, which means we've got an extra fixture to play in the knockout stages. But I don't see much reason to make changes to our starting 11. We will again see one pre-contract deal with Pinti joining BSC Young Boys at the start of season five. Speaking of them, we will be facing them in our first Europa League knockout fixture. As for their best player, they made the interesting transfer of Federico Bernardeschi from Toronto FC, the 79 rated Italian talent, trying to lead them to victory, but it's a draw in the first leg and we see three goals in the second leg to put us ahead four to one on aggregate. Now facing off against Union Berlin in the round of 16, they have signed Odysseus Vlachodimos, the high potential Greek goalkeeper, up to an 83 rating, but we put four goals past him in the first leg. Made the second leg quite easy as we advance five nil on aggregate. Now Carlson will face off against his former team, Azet in the quarter finals. They've signed the American Mihailovic, an 81 rated talent at 27 years old. But we continue to score goals for fun, 4 to 1 in the first leg. And we do lose the second leg, but still advance 5-3 on aggregate. We'll face Wolfsburg in the semi-final. They signed the Bayern talent Serge Gnabry, who's at an 84 rating at 30 years old. We pick up the win in the first leg, courtesy of an Eco Bravo 90th minute goal and a 3-0 win in the second leg. So we'll face West Ham United, the team that knocked us out of the Europa League last season as our final fixture this year. We do finish top four in La Liga, four points clear of the next place team with Barcelona winning the league, Real Madrid and Atleti rounding out the top four. It's Hirona, Mallorca and Granada to see the drop to La Liga Smart Bank. As for that league, Rayo Vallecano see the return along with Ibar and Cadiz. We see an exit in the round of 16 of the Copa de España losing to Barcelona on penalties with Real Madrid winning the competition against Sevilla. Juve win the Champions League against Atleti 
and Aston Villa get the win in the Conference League 2-1. to one. But it is time for this Europa League final against a strong West Ham team. We're missing out on our starting left back as Cardona tries to recover from an LCL injury. It's taken a while to get our first gameplay fixture of the rebuild, but what a time to do so. Las Palmas in Europa League football, and we built a capable squad to try to get the win. I've got to say, our goalkeeper Rossi was such a big player in this rebuild, especially for the gameplay to come, and we had some good attacking chances as we get towards the second half. We're into the 85th minute, some good build-up play in our midfield. I reiterated how strong that midfield is, and it pretty much led to this goal. Moreno pushing up from the center defense in mid position, getting in front of the keeper one-on-one -on -one and finding the back of the net. I thought it was fitting that David Silva's regen played a big part in that goal, and one of our original Las Palmas as players, Loadise lifting the trophy this time. Another successful season for David Silva, leading his team to Champions League football. A lot of that came off of Sadiq's goals up to an 85 rating and contributing 38 from 55. That was just two goals short of the most in the league. And for assists, Neres with a fantastic first season at the club, 13 from 54, and some good growth from our newly promoted Youth Academy players. Pardo up plus four to a 72, Jimenez up plus nine to an 80 overall, Garcia going up plus eight to a 77, and Gutierrez going up plus four to a 75. Finally, our manager rating has seen a rise just short of that 80 mark and I don't think we'll have any problem for job security anytime in the future. Every challenge we've faced at Las Palmas, we've seemed to conquer. Can we do it again here in season five as the board wants us to sign a couple of players to our youth academy, save some funds, look to win the league title, win the Copa de España, and reach the semifinal of the Champions League. Not easy tasks if I do say so myself, but 135 million in our transfer budget, and I was considering what to do as to what positions to sign. Some quality free agents like Casimiro, who has revolutionized the Manchester United team, Ultimately, I decided on Rodrigo Bentancourt, who has moved back to Italy, now featuring for Fiorentina at an 86 overall. Super unfortunate to hear that he suffered a long-term injury over the weekend, as he was in fantastic form for Spurs as well as Uruguay at the 2022 World Cup. But hopefully, he can be the difference maker in this Las Palmas team as he signs for 75 million, about 9 million more than his evaluation at Fiorentina. We will also see a player departure with our backup goalkeeper, Dominguez, joining Valencia on an 8.5 million transfer. Decided to sign a free agent goalkeeper, someone with decent potential with Alberto Flores. The Sevilla man recently got added to career mode, so I'm curious to see what he might be able to do off of the bench. But our season will see it start in the UEFA Super Cup against Champions League winners Juventus. We do get the win, both goals coming from Sadiq, so a great way to start the season and continuing our momentum from last year, as now we can focus on the league. It's about everyone ready to go for their sharpness and fitness. Cardona should be back and fully healthy within a few days, and we do start our season with a win against Ibar 2-0. For our Champions League group, we've got Milan, Ajax, and Dynamo Zagreb. Milan, their best player right now is actually Casemiro, signing as a free agent. Ajax seem to love signing Argentine left back, says we've got Taglifico leaving in recent transfer windows and Marcos Acuna joining. And for Dynamo Zagreb, they've lost a lot of their high potential players, but Verbanich seems to be the best of the bunch at a 73 overall. January 2027, and we're holding steady with a third place finish in the league. So seems like we're on our way to another Champions League qualification, but we're going to try to do our best in that competition, advancing out of the group stage with a second place finish. And again, no changes needed to our starting 11. One modification is that Jimenez has taken over the right wing spot as he is just developing really nicely in his overall and we'll begin in the Champions League against Napoli who mind you won the whole competition in season one they have brought in Sven Botman from Newcastle United he's up to an 87 overall that didn't stop us from scoring a goal as Sadiq got the opener and in the second leg, it was a nil-nil draw. We'll face Celtic in the quarterfinals. Probably the biggest surprise team at this stage of the competition. But they've signed the Manchester United man, Anthony Alunga, who's at an 82 overall rating. It was only one result, though, as we won 3-0 in the first leg and 1-0 in the second leg. 4-0 on aggregate puts us up against a rival in the league, Real Madrid, who have, of course, signed one of our former players, Alberto Molero, up to a 92 overall. But before we can play that match, we have the Copa de España final against Valencia. We've still yet to win this competition and that is going to remain true as we lose the final 1-0 courtesy of a Richarlison goal. But back to the Champions League, Real Madrid 
carried forward on our poor form in the last week, and now we lose 3-2 in the first leg, but see a comeback in the second leg. It's Hugo Guillemont who scores the winning goal to put us through to the Champions League final against PSG. What an opportunity for us to close out this season with another trophy. We stayed steady in that third place spot in the league. Atleti winning the La Liga title with 95 points and the relegation spots going to Valladolid, Vallecano, and SD Ibar. It's a surprise Europa League winner with Chelsea winning the competition and Roma to get the Conference League title against Feyenoord. Heading into this Champions League final, Sadiq has 28 goals across all competitions with Carlson having 15 assists from 55 appearances. He was tied with a number of players for the most assists in La Liga, but I wanted to check back on some former players including Pedri who's up to a 92 overall, Jeremy Pino up to an 87 overall rating, and a recent transfer for us was Vincent Kruger who's now up to a 90 overall at Spurs. But all focus will be on this Champions League final. Can we become the kings of Europe all the way from the Canary Islands? Right from the get-go my plan was to try to press PSG's defense and it's Bensacourt that wins back possession, Carlson finding Sadiq and just some incredible build-up play will eventually get the ball over to Navas. Fitting that David Silva's regen opens up the scoring using his preferred right foot to side foot that effort into the back of the net. That's not going to be enough though as we try to build upon our lead. Now it's Sadiq in front of goal. 15 minutes in, we have doubled our advantage and we have been the dominant team in this Champions League final. PSG not giving up though. It's going to be a ball set in the middle which we do well to clear but it's a follow-up effort from PSG to cut the deficit in half and just a lot of action in the first 20 minutes or so. But I mentioned earlier how big our goalkeeper has been for us and he continued to make saves through and through. Navas trying to get his brace, but the effort going off the post. Another failed effort cleared and eventually it falls over to Sadiq. He is going to get his brace as he makes it 3-1 to one for us. And with PSG trying to mount an attack, they will play the ball in the center. Big initial save and a great follow-up effort from Rossi. What a time to pull a double save out of his pocket. And with that, Las Palmas will be Champions League winners 3-1 to one in this final. A swift rise to the top and I think a lot of that was David Silva's doing.